Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about stream builders and I want to take the part of stream builders with Firestore Web. And as you can see above me already, you have on the left side, I created a little web page for my favorite YouTubers. And as you can see up here, we have all the lists with the YouTubers that we get via a stream. And our stream builder will build out this list at the end. And on the right side, you can see we can also add a new YouTuber to that list by adding the name, the description, URL and image URL. So now without further ado, let's get started. So to begin with, I want to show you again the boilerplate. So how does all, everything look? If we take a look into the application, you can see up there, there is at the moment an empty list that we want to create with our stream builder. And on the right side, you have that add things and everything. So and if we take a look into the code, you can see we have one screen, we call it home screen for us. And in this home screen, we have a row with two expanded widgets, which one is the YouTube list widget and the other one is the add YouTube card widget. And if we take a look now into the add YouTube card widget, it is just how um, we create a YouTuber. So for that, we add the different text types with a text form field. And at the end, we send everything up to Firestore. And we use for that Firestore instance, we call the collection and then we see add. And with that, we add a YouTuber to our list. If we take now a look into our Firebase, <clears throat> we can see here in our first time app that in the database, I set that already up. If you want to know how it works, I have already created a GitHub repository with um, web how you can create all of that. And if you don't know that you need to be on the Flutter channel beta to do all that. <clears throat> okay, so if we take a look here into channels, we have the different YouTube creators that I already added. And for each creator that we have added, we have the description, the image URL, the name of the YouTuber and the URL. So, and all of these we want to show now in our um, very nice UI and for that we need a stream builder because Firebase or Cloud Firestore, which is a package that we can use now for web since 13 days we can use it for the web. So if we take a look into the GitHub from, from Firebase Extended, we have the Flyer, Flutterfire releases. And here we have since 13 days the release where we can now use Firestore in web, which is awesome. So what we can do now is we can go and have to add to our web index HTML. We have to add some dependencies that we can find here at add Firebase to your JavaScript project. And if I click here, we come to the uh, Firebase website documentation um, and we have to add these dependencies in our index HTML. So if I take a look into our web folder that we have in our Android Studio, and take a look into index HTML, we can see we have the two scripts from Firebase with the version 7.5 at the moment. And underneath we have two scripts imported. One of them is the secret.js. And if I take a look into secret.js, you find the initialization of Firebase and um, the initialize web uh, app with the config. <clears throat> and after that, we open up our main and because we have all the dependency in our pubspec.yaml for Cloud Firestore, um, we have access now to that. And I also have a dependency to URL launcher. So far so good with our whole setup. Now let's go to our YouTube list widget. And here we want to create now the first time um, a stream builder. And how we start that, we create first the Firebase instance. Um, there are very good tutorials for um, architecture and I will cover that in a later part. But today I want to just take the instance of Firebase directly inside of the widget itself. So I say final Firestore. No, uh, Firestore.instance is the value where we get the Firestore. And I have to declare a variable and I will call it final uh, bar Firestore for now and make it private so that only this widget can access it. So this Firestore, we have to import, of course, the library of Cloud Firestore. 
And now we have the possibility from this instance to access the collection. So if I say now the collection and the collection name you will find if you go inside of our Firebase part, you find the collection name here. That is the collection name. So for me it is channels. And now I have the option to get the snapshots. And if we take a look into snapshots, it is a stream of data. And a stream is more or less a connection that is always on and you get in different time frames, you get information back. And this is now our thing that we want to use. It is a stream. And if we take a look inside of the snapshot once more, we get a stream of query snapshots, a stream of query snapshots. And all of them we can now use in our child because we have now a stream and a stream is required for a stream builder. So let's build our stream builder. And here we have to give a stream inside. For us it is the Firestore or better I should rename it to <coughs> um, channels stream. And we have to set up a builder and a builder is a, for a callback and this callback requires a context and if I'm not wrong and for that I will jump better into the stream builder and take a look what is this builder. It is an async widget builder which gets the type T so any type and if we take a look here we return uh, it is a function that returns a widget which takes the build context and re returns a uh, snapshot, snapshot. So let's go back to the builder and add here the um, <coughs> async snapshot. snapshot. And this is the build context, just to make it explicit. And we have to return a widget, right? So for now I return just a container. Okay, and if you maybe have seen the future builder, it is very similar to that. But the difference is whenever there comes new data from the stream, this builder method will be executed and will rebuild the part of the widget tree, which is very helpful for us because now we can access the snapshot and do um, and make different assumptions. So for example, what happens if the snapshot has error. If this is the case we want to return just a text that says error and give it the snapshot error. So we want to give him the error as a text back so that the user knows that there happened an error. But if there is something good we want to now have also to understand if there is still a connection in that stream. So we have to switch something and we switch about the snapshot.connection state. So what does this connection state help us with? If you look inside, we get something back called connection state. And the connection state is an enum, which is none, waiting, active, or done. So that means we have no connection at all, we wait for a connection, we are in an active connection, or we are done with the connection. So that means after that is done, there will be nothing triggered anymore and the widget tree will never be rebuilt. So we check against that because we want to work with that. So that means whenever there is the case that we wait for something, so connection state waiting, then we want to return a center which contains a child with a circular progress indicator. So when we are waiting for a connection information and we don't get any data at all, then we want to show a circular spinner that um, shows the user that there is something loaded. And I also give it a default value. When there is no waiting, then something should be happen at, as a default. And what I want to do is I want to get a list of document snapshot, which I received from um, Firebase. And I call it documents. <coughs> And this comes from snapshot.data because I assume that whenever I'm finished with waiting I get information. Then I get the data and say documents. The thing is data is a dynamic type. If I look here it is T. 
So I have to say somewhere that it is a document snapshot and I have to say it here in the async snapshot. So because down here we have the data and we couldn't see what happens inside, I have to add after the async snapshot the, the um, type of that async snapshot. And now you can see that documents exists in data because data is now from part T which is the query snapshot and documents is part of that and reserves us document snapshots. And with them, we can now build our list view. And for that, we have to return a list view that has different children. <clears throat> and what I will do now is I take the documents that I got and I map them from left to right and inside of this mapping, I can now say, for example, that I get a document snapshot, snapshot, and I want to return something differently. So it is red now because we want to map these documents. And as you see, we are already in a list. So I have to remove this list because of what I want to do is I want to make my own list and return them immediately. So I map the snapshots to a widget and after that, I collect them in a list. And now it should get green. And inside of this mapping, I have now to map the values that we get in the snapshot to something that we want to show. <clears throat> and what we want to show for beginning uh, to begin with is a list tile, right? So we create a list tile. And here we have the possibility of leading, which is in a list tile is a very cool widget which is creating already the list tile for us and it has some specific values like leading where we have like uh, an image or something so what i will add here is an image and a circular avatar and here will be the background image a network image which is an image provider so how do we deliver that and now we can access the snapshot dot um, with the value from the document. So that means here is it the image URL. So if we go back to our Firebase once more and select one of the documents, for example, from creator here in that example, we can see here are the different fields and we want to access with that now the different fields. So we could also say that this one is a document, right? So the whole thing is a document. And it is maybe better instead of calling this a snapshot to just call it a document. So we get the image now by via network whenever we load the page. And if we take a look into our Google Chrome and reload the page. So um, yeah, we got an error. And if you see, we found cannot read property key of undefined. And I searched a little bit and found out that I forgot to return the list tile, of course. And that was a mistake. So after we return the list tile, we can find our images with the name of the different YouTubers. And a big shout out to all of them. So if you don't know Oliver Gomez, he makes amazing Flutter videos. Uh, Florian Pop is a JS expert, uh, which I really like. Code with Andreas, if you have any questions regarding testing and Flutter as, as, and so on, check him out. And Creator is also a friend of mine, so check him out. So, um, but last but not least, we want to add now this, this tile and we have created a description and what we want to have is here like a, a subtitle that says it is a text from document description. And if this one is null, we want to show nothing else. We want to show the document description. Much better. Cool. And now we get the different uh, descriptions. Cool. So that's it already. So we use the stream builder to create that nice little list. And if we watch up there now and we add as any YouTuber that we like. So if I go to YouTube and search for any YouTuber that I like. So for example, myself, then we can take the channel URL up here. We go to our new view. We enter the name of the YouTuber, for example, um, Flutter explained to. We go to YouTube description, um, yep, go further. 
We have the URL of YouTube. We use any URL that we have for an image. So we can go to Pexels, for example, and just pick a nice little image. So for example, that one, and say we take the image location and we add this to our list. Now you can see immediately, because the stream identifies that something has changed in the list of the Firestore, it updates already here the list. And that is amazing. So, so if we take a look into our Firebase, we have it that immediately we have also something here in the list. So for example, if I add another one and do that by side by side, so I push that to the side a little bit and having that on the other side, and I add any YouTuber with any name, so give it a nice description, a URL, and go. And I click on Add YouTuber to the list. We can see immediately that up there, there is also added the YouTuber. And with that, you have the possibility to share a lot of devices and a lot of different clients with the same information and that in nearly real time. Cool. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. This time the button for subscribers on the left side. I hope you don't be confused. And if you have anything that you uh, would like to share, please leave it down in the comments. Up there you find two videos that you are maybe interested in. And I would be very happy if you can share this video. So enjoy the rest of your day and see you tomorrow guys.